Hello there, good morning, and welcome to my channel. And you're most welcome if you're returning, and you're most welcome if you're here for your first time. Um, I'm Angela, I'm an artist, perhaps an illustrator, though I'm never quite sure. Um, my main work is designing adult colouring books, colouring books for grown-ups, as I prefer to call it. And um, But I do do other art, and this here is an example of my personal art. Um, it's a pen drawing that's been done with, uh, you know, Uniball eye pens, a rollerball pen. One of, where is it? Oh dear, you bet I can't find it now I want it. Nope, I can't see it. Put it somewhere safe, don't know where I've put it. So that's okay. Um, but it's a rollerball pen that's got permanent ink in it. And um, then I've, u and I've used a grey pit artist pen which I do have here, the Faber-Castells. Um, they are India ink and they're waterproof once they're fully dry. If you catch them before they fully dry, you can actually shift the colour a little bit with water, which I've done in the past. Um, but I added that because it's, you know, it's what I do. And I've started adding colour with some ink tents pencils from Derwent. And the colours I've used so far are Sienna Gold, Cherry, uh, Madder Brown, Mustard and Baked Earth. The Mustard and the Sienna Gold are here. You can see there's a slight difference in tone. But um, today I've dug out a, a sixth colour, which is Deep Indigo, because indigo and browns and reds and those golden yellowy colours, well, it's my kind of thing, isn't it? So I thought this morning, um, while I have my morning mug of tea, because I have got a mug of tea here, I thought it'd be quite nice if I spent some time adding colour with you. Because it will get me in the mood for adding colour later on. And just a general, I suppose, chit chat and catch up more than anything. It's, uh, it's what I do, isn't it? Well... It's what I kind of like to be able to do. I'm not sure I'm always successful at it, but it'd be nice. So that's before I really turn my attention to work today, though. Once I've done this, I may be hitting the shower and heading out for a walk before um, rain is most likely today. It, we have got rain forecast today. Um, there's no two ways about that. Or the possibility of it and it's this afternoon that it's more likely to be rainy so although I'm doing this here and now it may not get posted until later today which wouldn't make a blind bit of difference to you because you get it when when you get it don't you but um I will move my kitchen towel to the other side in a moment I'm trying to be careful with how I apply water and work from the side that I want lightest to the side I want darkest. So I'm pushing the pigment towards one side. So I um, maintain where I want the shadows here. Looks like I'm going to be having to add a little bit more of this deep indigo to get that really deep shadowy tone. lovely thing about ink tents is how in ink intense the colours are, hence the name. But they're also fab because once they're down, they're waterproof. Yeah, they're permanent. So they don't shift unless you've missed some of the pigment. So that's really quite nice. And um, I think we use some... Um... Now here's me thinking carefully because I know that I've got... the mustard next door to these in places. I'm thinking if I make this area mustard, then I can use a different colour around the outside. And I'm tending towards um, it's probably baked earth, which is the orangey brown that's in the centre here. This is the madder brown. And I think the madder might be just a 
No, I don't know. It might work. I may use a combination. Oh gosh, I put that in the wrong place. Doesn't matter. It will work its way in, as it were. I may use a combination of two of these just to, um, so I can get darker colour where I want darker colour. This is the um, this mustard colour and the sienna gold, along with indigo or two, you know, three of my favourite colours, which always surprises me because I've always gone for purples and pinks and so on. But I really seem to be on a kind of vintagey kind of colour tone journey, I suppose. And I'm going to sneeze, you'll have to excuse me. <coughs> oh gosh. Allergies. Early mornings. Except it's not so early a morning. Which is a good thing actually because I haven't been um, sleeping well the past week. And I don't know why. Oh gosh, that's that yellow that I... Well, it's there now, so it'll be fine. It'll all work its way out. So, I'll tell you, there's no such thing as accidents or mistakes. Only happy accidents and creative opportunities. Even when I'm using permanent, especially when I'm using permanent media. So that's my, oh gosh, now I've got a runny nose. It's the change in temperature because it's been quite cool here. Yesterday I was actually shivering at one point in the day. It wasn't that cold, but in comparison, it is. And I ended up in bed in the afternoon because I was absolutely exhausted. Right, excuse me while I find a tissue to blow my nose with. Sorry, I really ought to learn to. I, I did sort this out before I started, but head head bent forward, I guess, and yeah, uh, yeah. What can I say? Not the Madder Brown. I want the. I love that name, Madder Brown, as if there's brown and there's a Mad Brown and there's an even Madder Brown. And I know it's got nothing to do with that, but it just makes me snigger a little bit I suppose well so I yeah so I ended up in bed yesterday afternoon for a, a, a good while and I felt a lot better when I woke up and I had a feeling I'd be asleep early because I was still tired and but as soon as I got into bed bunk, I was awake again it's all the um, ablutions before bed as it were and that kind of activity that just wakes me up that bit perhaps I ought to do those things a lot earlier and prepare myself for bed a couple of hours before I want to go to bed so at least I can just crawl into bed and be asleep and I'll talk about this and I'll forget completely about it and get engrossed in what I normally do you know same goes, it is what it is, and I can work with all of this regardless. So. This is the um, the paper I'm, this is work being worked on, is um, Claire Fontaine's um, Paint On Mixed Media Paper, which is quite a sturdy paper. It's got a nice texture to it that my... Um, that um, wrecks the points of um, Sakura microns and Unipin pens very quickly and clogs up um, technical drawing pens whenever I use those. And it also takes forever for the ink to dry, so the roller balls work fairly smoothly on it, so the Unipin eyes and that kind of thing. The only problem is the ink takes ages to, to dry. 
wish if I've tried the um the zebra or the um Arteza vintage gel pens on because their ink is waterproof once it's dry. I can't remember if I've tried working with that on here. The nice thing about the paint on as well is that it does come in different tones. So there's one that's um it's a craft paper tone, so it's a sort of like brownish colour. There's a grey. And they now have a black one as well, which I don't have. I don't do a lot with colours that would show up on black particularly, or sort of media that would. But it's certainly intriguing and interesting. I think Distress Oxide inks would show up on it, so it could make for an interesting background, kind of. But I think I have enough to explore as it is. With art and media. And that, the other nice thing is that I'm not using a lot of water, so these areas don't take very long to dry, which is even nicer. And this paper does take up, um, quite happily let me work with, a, you know, a number of layers of things like um, the ink tents to build the colours up if I wish. And I do wish with the the indigo which I can go back to now because it's mostly dry though I may only just do a couple of them because it does still there's a difference in the paper when it's damp and a difference in the way that the pencil feels as you're putting it down and I can't describe it it just feels a bit spongier and that tells me that 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 there is still wet so let's just if it's still wet you can get kind of the ink tents on there but then in the wet areas it does tend to want to stick so I'll just dry the tip of that off now you see where there's a really dark line there where the so much of the ink tents just sunk straight into the paper and became permanent all on its own so which is fine this is one of my favorites I actually might dig out the um what's the other one I particularly like? Um the dark aquamarine actually because I think that would add a, a nice pop of colour as well. So um look, there it is. So I can tell which one it is simply because the I'll focus hopefully, I don't know if you can see but the top of it's cracked, so it makes it easier for me to pick it out from the, the pot of them. So talking of having bright Blob, you know, areas of brightness. The centre of these could be quite nicely done in the aquamarine, I think. And then the trick is to go around and get more. So there's quite a few of these kinds of designs, either with one layer or a couple of them. This is my favourite kind of thing to do. I'm going to make that one there has got my um my initials in. I usually try to hide them away in my artwork somewhere. Make them part of a feature or a, a motif. So they don't stand out but they're there. I think in Zen Tangle speak they're referred to as a chop. I think it's got something to do with sort of like the the way that people in Japan or Korea use stamps to apply their initials to it and I think it's it's not a Western word. But I'm not too sure. The other nice thing about ink tents is that they are transparent or mostly transparent. So even though I'm colouring over the um, pit artist pens here, I'll actually look. Oh, a couple more over here just spotted. So even though I'm colouring over them, they seem to disappear. Once I add water, that will activate, as it activates the colour, to add to a couple of other, oh, there's a couple more here. I 
up to some of these bigger bigger ones of these because I'm not going to have them all the same colour, I don't think. If I do, I can always go back and amend that. Just having a quick scan round. Yeah, I think I've got all of them. So now is the um, time to make sure I get them all with colour, isn't it? This is lovely. Actually, this, this and the, the indigo will really add those little pops of colour here and there. Um, which help to brighten all the other colours. Um, this is a, it's a complementary colour, so it's opposite the colour wheel to the orange, oranges and reds. So together they will look brighter than on their own. But I need to remember not to do too much because otherwise it becomes overwhelming. But to choose to use them here and there will really lift the colours, hopefully. I think we'll get an idea of that the closer I get to the other colours. Now I'm thinking I might dig out some, um, see if I've got some more of the vintage -y greens. Oh, there's a little one here. It just needs a hint of it. So I've got some vintage greeny colours in the ink tents and perhaps use those for some of the, these fronds and things, but perhaps not. I shall see how it all goes. But these little ones, I'm not trying to really create a gradient. I just need to activate the colour and let the, um, the Faber Castell underneath do its job, which is there to darken. So these are, there's another one there, just add some colour from and the others, it's a new little one. Okie dokes. Of course, highlights and so on. If I don't leave enough of a highlight here, I can always add it later at a later point with a gel pen. And that's often part of my thinking as I do things is yeah, let's get the colour on. Try to get shad you know it darker where it needs to be darker. But not to worry too much because there are always ways once everything's dried to add that shadow in or highlight in or both in if I want. But as it is, it will work. Right, the other areas I need to do all of these little ones over here. Lots of them. And because they're little. I said I'm not going to worry too much. So yeah, about gradients and so on. Again, that is what I've said it before. I'm, I'm wittering now, aren't I? Oh, spill over. It's okay because while it's wet, I can mostly remove it, and what is left will be become more or less invisible. This is such a lovely colour. I have a feeling this pencil is one that will be replaced really quickly. Okie dokes, let's have a look because I think I might want to just add a few more of these ones over here. Some of the bigger examples, I think, here and there. Again, just to tie colours in in different areas and to make sure. It's, it's the colour is scattered throughout without being overwhelming, I think is my plan. Scattering of this aquamarine. And as I've added the colour, I can see where perhaps I need little bits of it. But again, it's not something that I have to get all done all in one go. I can just see how it all pans out. But it is lovely. So 
yeah so it's been a been a weird few days um, I've been out of sorts emotionally well, I was most of last week I mean I think I have an idea why um, I mean it can just be emotional weather we all have emotional weather and for no apparent reason our moods can just drop and I think I've learnt mostly to let things just kind of be and not try necessarily to seek reasons and with me it could just be the time of year that it is because sort of like the middle of August is a repeating pattern for me in my life um, and it could be just that I'm heading up towards you know, a specific day then and that always causes me some problems or has done but I also know how to deal with that the biggest problem is it makes me not want to bother with people even more don't it makes me sound like I don't like people I do really like people but I like people in um, in, in limited and manageable amounts I guess is the best way to describe it because um, I, I'm an introvert. Introverts, it's not that introverts don't like people, it's just that we get drained with interaction with people and need plenty of time alone to recoup and recover. And the more extroverts in the world don't get that, they think we should all be extroverted. And introverts do wish sometimes that extroverts could be a bit lower key, not so you know, infuse you know, loud and noisy and um, doing doing things that they do. Um, I much prefer a quiet conversation, um, sort of chats and discussions about about things with like-minded people. I suppose is that um, without a lot of confrontation or. Um, not high energy interaction into but still deep because high energy doesn't always mean, mean um, a deep and meaningful interaction so I am aware of that in myself and I'm quite comfortable with with that aspect of me but sometimes when I say Things. I think oh, everybody must think I absolutely hate people. I don't for the most part. People are interesting. But I, I'm also aware of my own personality and to a degree, not, not entirely perhaps, but my own, also my own needs to look after myself. And um, I think I may have... I'm, the reason I was out of sorts this week may just have been that I just overdid things with people in some ways or another. But I don't know for sure. But it's fine. All is fine and well in the world. It really is. That's worked out nicely. It's not very often I will use two colours and blend them together, but um, not when I'm using a relatively dry brush anyway, for sure. Letting wet drop into wet is, is fun, uncontrollable and hazardous, especially when you give me lots of colours I could potentially use. Where I know that limited colour is actually better for me. But that actually works out quite nicely, doesn't it? I think so. And then I think what I want here... So I'm going to use splashes of this. So just think that that blue coming out and all of that orange and yellow would be quite a nice kind of contrast here, wouldn't it? Use little bits. You've got to decide now what colour I put on the end. Oh no! Nightmare time for me. So 
to hint a bit on these ones. Okay, let's have a look. This is here. No, oh, wrong one. Ugh. Got my sketchbooks here. Whoops, something's fallen on the floor. But let's have a look. Let's get my my ink tents ones out. My ink tents, ink tents um, swatches. Okay, so I've got the dark aquamarine and I'm looking for iron green would look rather cool. That spring green is quite nice as well. So let's have a look. This will take me a moment I'm sure. Oh, I've got iron blue. What's the iron blue like? I always forget what iron blue is like. I'm hunting for it because I'm looking in the right, wrong place. There's iron blue. And the indigo is down there. So the iron blue is actually a really nice blue. And then I'm looking for... Iron green, there we are, it's that one there. So that would look nice with the dark aquamarine, I think. But I really would like that spring green as well for the real, that lighter look. It's the Ionian like. See, the Ionian is a lighter colour of that. So the iron green. Beach green would be quite nice. I did see that here. Pacific is like. It's just had the beach green. Fern, felt, Ionian, felt, that's apple green. Oh, there's the spring green. We'll use spring green. So that spring green should work nicely with the dark aquamarine. Let's have a look on the back. Let's try it. This is what backs of paper are for. Well, backs, backs of artwork. Let's see how they blend together. Oops, and I'm completely off the screen there. Sorry. This is the spring green, and I'm going to blend it into or with the dark aquamarine. That actually works really nicely. There we are. And usually for me, I've chosen colours that will work together. It is rather lovely, actually. It's a nice, nice mix of colours there. There we are. So perhaps I'll pop the iron green back and um, just give that a bit of a pat just to make sure it's not going to wet as it is. But um, we can do that right then. So the spring green can go not all the way up to the top because I want to blend these colours together and blend the green out, I think, a little bit. I think that would look quite nice. I could have made an absolute disaster here because I was planning on doing this fair, well, I say monochrome, more with analogous colours perhaps than anything else. But, um, you know, there's, it just needs a bit of a lift perhaps. And um, I try to stick to a small number of colours here. All the same. And, um, And what's the worst thing that happens? I'm not too fussed on what I've done and I learn from it. Which, as far as I'm concerned, is a good outcome. So I'll look here. So I'll start with the, with the green because it's the lightest colour. And just pick a little bit up there just to spread out and then start moving it backwards away from the light area 
and then it will start to blend with that darker Ooh, that's lovely especially when it's wet when it dries i know it's going to dry back lighter than it is there and less vibrant because it's the water really does make the color vibrant the glossy surface I think this one will work really lovely. I think so. And then this means that I'm likely to use these colours in those um, central bits there. Just look at that, it's me doing the wrong end to begin with. From green to blue. That's the way to go here. Yeah. Now I'm cleaning my brush off in between each one because obviously I just want green at the top really. And then the green ones blend into blue. Wish the colour stayed that bright and vibrant when when the um when the medium dries. I'm sure there must be varnishes and finishes I can get. The um, clear glaze pens would work on that, but um, I would probably get through a pack doing all of this. But then they are things that I can use sparingly to get a nice finish or a nice effect on. Actually, they're not drying back too much to um, insipid or too dull to be honest so this is the first one i've done so the colors remain really lovely and vibrant that's one of the wonderful things about ink tanks it's that vibrancy of color and the ease with which you can get that vibrancy of color so there we are proven to myself this morning that now i'm in a better frame emotionally frame of emotions I can make better colour choices, which all goes well for me doing some of the um, to get the plates done for the book. I've been talking about getting them done for a week or two, haven't I? Last week was not the week to do them. Today could be the day to get a couple done, actually, if I sacrifice going out for a walk. again I also know that when I'm in the right frame of mind um, that's when I need to get on with things and it's being at peace with myself about this it's taken me a long time to accept this even though I will push myself yesterday I did do art I didn't do any of this I Still wasn't in the right place really to pick up. I know that if I tried to do this yesterday, I'd have ended up making a pig's ear of it. But um, I spent the day, my the arty part of my day, collecting um, sort of doodly motifs and things together, creating a collection of them, ready for doing some more doodle worlds things, I think. Um, I shall see how that goes. Uh, I really need, it's really hard sometimes for me to find the personal oomph, the belief in myself to do these things. It's, it's all too easy for me to think, oh, why am I bothering? Nobody will want this or like this. And when I do it, I'm always pleasantly surprised. So that inner doubt still exists. The inner critic is still very much there. The imposter syndrome is still very much alive within me. But again, it's something I'm aware of and I know to that green and the aquamarine together make the most lovely colour. I have to say that the spring green. The way they blend is just lovely. It works really, really nicely. 
checking I'm still on the screen a moment now because I can become totally immersed in art and forget I'm filming and I'm essentially talking to myself even though I know you'll be listening in but what do you think about that I actually think that works really nicely I know I've surprised myself there these definitely going to have that colour in them and that'll give you a really good idea of hopefully how these colours will lift each other I've got that a bit there and then let's put the green one see this area is damp it's bubbling up a little bit but it'll dry flat and this paper does take a little while to dry which is a nice thing as well it makes it so much easier to move the colors the intense colors like this these may not have quite the lightest color at the top oh, I didn't, perhaps they will It's just I'm just not drying my brush off enough here. By doing this instead of using a different colour, I really am tying these two set these two parts together, the fronds growing out of this. Like a weird kind of sea anemone, I suppose, or coral. Or a bulbous plant. You sometimes get plants, don't you, that have things where, like, the, the bulb is always sticks up above the ground, like, um, so always. But where I think you have plants like the um, hyacinths and um, amaryllis. Hyacinths are like, I'm not so fussed on amaryllises. Just not my kind of flower, I suppose. There they are. But that does tie them all together, ties two parts together, doesn't it? Now, these central bits, I am tempted to use the red and um, the cherry red and the sienna gold again to bring those two parts together. <coughs> Before I decide to do that, I'm just going to let all of this just kind of dry and um, stay away from that area. And it's now, oh gosh, nearly 40 minutes just to do these little bits. But um, that's where I'm going to leave it with you for today and myself because I'm going to finish my tea, I'm going to get some breakfast and then I'm going to settle to work. And I hope you've enjoyed seeing this. I think every morning this week I'm going to do a little bit of this except for a Wednesday which will be template Thursday on a Wednesday where I'll draw this week's colouring template always like to show that on the Wednesday, a bit of a sneak preview of what's going to be available on Thursday. Um, but the other days, I think I'll do more of this and carry on with it because it's, yeah, it's going to be an interesting journey, this one, because do I stick to just these colours? I'm beginning to go, oh, it could be interesting if I did something different. I don't want to do something to this madder brown. It's quite, uh, it might be all right in the grand scheme of things, but may want to add just a touch of red to it but I'm going to put it to one side and leave it so all that it remains for me to do is to say thank you very much for joining me this morning hope you've enjoyed it I hope to see you again especially if you're a first time visitor it'd be lovely to see you back and um, look after yourselves take care and find some time in your day to be creative whatever creativity is for you I think it's important. It certainly helps me um, manage my emotional weather when emotional weather hits, just like the real weather. But the sun's always there and I can always sense it within me. So even though my mood may be low, I still know the sun's there and once the clouds have gone, I'll be back to where I am right now today. I'm wittering. I'm going to disappear. 
and say thank you. Bye-bye for now.